Hello and welcome to part 4 of building SQL Server 2012 Next Gen HDR Test Lab using Windows Server 8 Hyper-V. In last video you learned how to create Windows Server 8 Domain Controller. Now in today's video will enable the same domain controller to also play the role of a storage controller which providing iSCSI target for shared iSCSI disk required for failover clusters. My name is Prakash. I work as a senior infrastructure DBS Advanced Software. You can visit my blog at www.sqlfeatures.com. Leave your comments, subscribe. Let's look at the agenda. Today we'll be covering configuring Windows Server 8 storage server. In this series of videos, first we talk about low power SQL Server test lab on Windows Server 8, which supports Hyper-V as well as ESXFI of VMware. And this is a very steady configuration. Use a very low power consumption if you're looking to build a new server. In case you're looking to use your existing laptop or desktop to be used as a side machine for Hyper-V lab, then the second video is meant for that where you can boot from a VHD and install the complete Hyper-V lab on that. In third video we talk about configuring the Windows 8 Server Hyper-V as well as the domain controller. We did talk about creating the parent and differential disks. Now let's talk about the fourth set of video where we'll talk about a storage server. For a storage server we are not going to need any more IP addresses as we are going to use the same IP address we have used as a storage server as well. Let's start. So you have a launch new virtual disk wizard to create a virtual disk but before we create a virtual disk we need to create one of the target where this virtual disk can be assigned. So what I'll do is I'll go back to QDC 21 I'll get the icon ID for that server so that I can assign it to the disk. So let's go to QDC 21. So we are here. Click on Tools, iSCSI Initiator. First time you run it, it will start the service. In the target, put the IP address for the storage controller, which is 10.0.0.99. Click on Quick Connect. Very nice. Go to the Discovery. As you can see, it is here. So now this server has registered into the storage controller. And this is the initiator name, IQN. This name you can directly add it to the server. But since now we just did a discovery of it by looking for the targets, now the server itself can see this IQN and we'll see it now. Click OK. Go back to the storage controller. All right. Click on Launch Near Disk Wizard. You are seeing the current C drive. Click Next. Give it a good name. Send disk 01 underscore Q. We'll use it for cluster. Give it a good description here if you want. I'll make it 100 meg as we are just testing. Click next. Click on new iSCSI target. Give it a name. Click next. Access servers. Click add. Now as you can see, select from initiator QDC21 is already here. Since we iconed it, you click OK. Click Next, Enable Authentication, leave it as it is, click Next, everything's configured, go ahead and click Create. And this is how your storage configuration works. You have created one LUN with a size of 100 MB, which can be used for anything you want to use it in a cluster. Ideally in a cluster the size would be bigger, more than 1 gig for each and every file. So now let's go ahead and configure this VHD into QDC21. All right, I'm back in QDC21. Click on Tools, iSCSI Initiator. You already defined the targets last time. Put it again. 
and 099 click quick connect you'll find the disk which you just created is available click done now your disk is connected go back to volume and devices click auto configure and now you are able to mount the device here so this is how it works first you configure iSCSI initiator on the machine where you want this to be added and then you go to the target and do a query to the server which means server get registered for this IQN of this server QDC21 and that's what we see in Q in domain controller where we are making it a storage controller you can see this icon was visible and now you come back once you created all the LUNs necessary needed you come back and then you again did a quick connect and you are able to see the target which you just created and now with the volumes you just configured it click OK now click tools click on computer management click on disk management you should see a 100 MB disk here not configured so there you go right click on the disk make it online click initialize ok new simple volume I'll adjust testing so I keep the values default and voila we have an e drive ready getting 100 MB and that's an iSCSI drive which can be used in cluster there you go so as you can see drive is 100 MB drive this is how iSCSI drives you can configure it and now you can use these drives into a failover cluster the same way you can create multiple targets multiple iSCSI remember finding the iSCSI target and source is very important either you need to get the iSCSI initiator IQ number from either of them to connect to the another one right that concludes our today's session thanks for watching this video i hope it helps you in learning how to configure storage iSCSI share try you can subscribe me on my blog as well as youtube as well as feel free to connect me on twitter and facebook if you want me to cover any other sessions or have any questions feel free to uh, log in comments and i'll try my best to address them I look forward to see you next session.